Hi everyone and welcome back to a new video of me, the Tinkering Dad. In this video I will be showing you how to replace a faulted drive in a QNAP. Uh, here you see I've logged into the web interface uh, of the QNAP and as you can see drive 2 has some failure. It says disk read and write error. Um, the RAID volume itself is a RAID 5. Uh, it hasn't gone faulty yet uh, so it works but I think this error is because it has had some too many smart errors and uh, problems detecting the driver. Uh, well, it says read write error and disk IO, so some problems uh, with communicating with the drive. Uh, and as you see, it says abnormal and errors were detected on the disk. It is recommended to replace the disk. This is what QNAP's interface says to me, so this is what I'm going to do. Uh, all of the other four drives, well, all, all, uh, three drives, four in total, uh, are working. Uh, well, at least they say that say, the test says good. I know disk one has some issues uh, with testing, so I will probably need to replace that soon, I think. But for now, it's the drive two that I'm going to replace, and I'm going to do it all live. I can access the files perfectly, so. And here you see the QNAP itself, and as you probably can tell, the red light shows displays which uh, drive is the problem drive. Uh, and they're labeled 1, 2, 3, 4 from left to right. So, to remove uh, the drive, um, this is hot plug drives, which means they can be removed in uh, online when everything is running. I'll pull up this lever of sorts, and, and I can pull it out from here. And just straight out and as you can see there's lots of dust and lint in here these haven't been opened in since I bought it seven eight years perhaps uh, I will uh, do some cleaning here I have some compressed air probably not the best idea and the best way to clean it but I can't really reach in there and I won't be turning it off so uh, I will do some air blowing inside there uh, I'll probably do some more cleaning off camera just to make sure it's really clean since I don't turn it off very often so this is my chance to do it and as you can see this is uh, th this model is a QNAP TS412 uh, and it's as I said about seven or perhaps eight years old um, so yeah okay back to the web interface and as you can see here and uh, drive number two is missing uh, no disk which is completely correct and with that the raid volume is in degraded mode which means that if one of the other three drives in the raid fails I'm in big trouble uh, all my data will be gone so well uh, same here on the raid management you can see it's in degraded mode uh, and here you can see it should say that the disk does not exist. Simply, uh, yeah, well, it, it just shows that it's behaving correctly and it's not showing anything weird, uh, such as it's not removed or anything like that. So, now replace the drive. So, uh, now I will um, remove the drive from its drive enclosure, uh, which is pretty simple. Uh, and as you can see, this is a, well, if you can see, this is a Samsung drive um, that is two terabytes in size. Okay, uh, on the other side I have four screws, pretty simple. So I'll just remove them. And the drive will come loose. Now, if you're wondering why I could remove a drive live and online with accessing all the drives, it's simply because those four drives are connected uh, in a thing called RAID, which is very good. Uh, see, four screws. Ah, this is, uh, there are four. I can, if I have uh, some um, smaller drives, two and a half inch drives, I can use these other holes instead. 
if I have some other form factor on the drive, which is good. So the drive is gone. Uh, I think I'll do some cleaning here before I insert the new drive. And as I said, um, those four drives are connected in a RAID. And RAID is a industry standard way of connecting several drives in a redundant way, uh, which is exactly what I'm using here. Uh, and that basically means that I can remove uh, a drive or so. Uh, some RAIDs allow several drives to fail, um, but in this my case it's RAID 5. <coughs> okay, here's a new drive. Uh, this is a Western Digital and it's made for uh, appliances like this. Uh, this particular drive. And this one is a uh, 4 terabyte drive. Uh, the size is 4 terabyte. Um, since I'm planning to, um, when I replace the faulty drives, I will double the size for this. Which I can do when all 4 drives are the same size. Which in my case will be 4 terabytes. Then I can expand the volume and make it double. Which is good. Here you can see it and the model number there. <coughs> so I'll just uh, the same screw hole so I'll just screw that back into the drive enclosure exactly the same way as the other one just lining up the holes and screwing the four screws back and now uh, a RAID 5 in my case means that I that one of the drives are lost in the storage um, but that's the cost of getting it to be redundant which is of course worth it otherwise if one drive fails um, then every all my data would be lost so this is simply my little insurance so don't be afraid if you're configuring an, um, uh, one of these QNAPs or some similar device just use any RAID, any RAID besides RAID 0, since RAID 0 is basically no RAID. In my case it's RAID 5, which I would probably recommend in most cases for home use. Okay, uh, I think it's back in its driving closure. Uh, it's looking good. Um, yeah, and I will just insert this in the QNAP in slot 2, uh, where the other one was located. Okay, so uh, let's insert the drive uh, in the empty slot. Same position as all of the other ones. It can't go the other way. Uh, and I usually pull out the lever or the lock uh, hatch uh, when I insert it. So uh, yeah, just simply as a precaution, so I know it's really stuck there. And when it's really close uh, in inside it, um, uh, I close it. And as you can see, uh, yeah, the green light above the drive shows uh, green, which means it has power. It has detected that it's a, it's a drive inside it. So I assume now that the QNAP will try to spin it up um, and get it detected and see if it's um, doable as a replacement uh, for the faulty drive. So we just have to wait to see if it's if it will detect and do that. I think uh, the power light should be different when it has started doing something. Yeah, now as you can see the power light is now blinking green and red instead of simply blinking red and nothing so green and red that indicates to me that uh, it's doing something and uh, it's doing something good it took about 15 20 seconds for it to notice that so good, let's go look and yeah now we can see in drive 2 it has detected my new drive the western digital and its size it's double the size and it's yeah, the smart information records good, and the drive, uh, uh, the RAID status is rebuilding, 
which is good. This will probably take some time. It is zero percent at the moment, and it's taken two or three minutes now. The same information you can see here. Uh, yeah, rebuilding uh, same information there, which is good. I'll just have to wait. And the smart information on the disk too. So that's good, no errors, and everything is good, and you can read the temperature and everything else, which is excellent, good. Now, a little skip ahead, uh, about 7 hours and 50 minutes in time, and as you can see, it is revealing 61% now, uh, which will take some hours left. I will skip ahead more, and now it's the next day, and it's completed. I think it took roughly 12-13 hours to complete everything. But now everything looks good. Um, the RAID volume is in red state. And everything looks good here in the smart information on the drive. Now it also has done its rapid test, uh, which completed good. Excellent. So, um, yeah, the drive is now replaced. and. Uh, Everything worked as it should. Um, so, that's it for me now. Thank you and goodbye.